So uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to describe how to do the slot glitch. Um, it's not really a glitch, it's more of a uh, whatever you call it when you take advantage of something. I always forget the word, but you know what I mean. Um, and basically the way it works is you can, you are, you have the ability to stop any slot in the game where you want it. Um, and the way it works is by using the square button, which the square button is usually used exploit, thank you. Um, it's basically an exploit. Uh, it's exploiting the way that the menu works in the game. So uh, you can stop the slots anywhere you want and this allows you to get off you know, Tifa's ultimate limit very easily. It allows you to cheat the battle arena and get exactly what um, things, you know, things on the reels you want. Um, but the most important thing it does is it allows you to cheat uh, Kate Sith's limit break, which allows you to get game over whenever you want. And game over automatically kills anything in the game um, in one shot. It'll kill Emerald Weapon, it'll kill Ruby Weapon, it'll kill Safer Sephiroth, legitimately anything in the game it will kill. The only thing I have found that it doesn't kill is it doesn't kill Sephiroth if you cheat him into the game, if you cheat the the actual Sephiroth like uh, character into the game, it does not kill him. And it also doesn't kill Ruby Weapon if his tentacles aren't in the ground. He's immune from pretty much everything when he is when he doesn't have his tentacles in the ground. But anything else, it will kill it in one hit. So first, I'll show you how it works here. The reason I'm going to show you this first is that it's less complicated. Uh, Kate Sith's game over works a little different. Yes, it works on everything. Like, if, you, if your question is, does Kate Sith's insta-death work on blank, the answer is yes. <laughs> the only two things in the game it does not work on is Ruby when his tentacles aren't in the ground, and Sephiroth's actual character if you cheat him into the game. But that's it. It works on legitimately everything else. Anything else you can think of. Name something, it works. It's a little overpowered, but I'll, t I'll explain why it's so overpowered in a moment. But first, let me show you how it basically works. Uh, the basic gist is when you get a slot, um, the slot will roll on the screen. And while it's rolling, if you hit square, square is the key that normally hides whatever your menu is so that you can see what your life is and everything. Um, or like for example your barrier because usually it covers up the barrier thing but if you hit square the slots even though it sounds like they're still going they're not actually still going so if I were to quickly tap square you can see that the slots are now slowly rolling because they aren't rolling while square is pressed so using this you can get the slot to land exactly where you want it for example, if I wanted to land on, let's say, level down, what I would do is I would go to the thing right before level down, like the boot, and basically the way it works is if you press circle on pretty much like any frame after the boot is gone, then it will land on the next thing. It won't like flip back over what it was. So basically you can get the boot to about right here, about right where it's like, you know, starting to, starting to go away, like right there probably. And then just let go of square and hit circle, like right at the same time, and you'll get exactly what you want. Uh, with a lot of practice, you can do this a lot faster. Um, I've done it so many times now that I do it like, you'll see me do it in the new threat mod constantly without telling, like saying anything about it just because I know, like if I want poison, bam, poison. So you really get like used to mastering it. Um, but, you know, so during the new threat mod, I'm just kind of doing it. I'm not even, like, thinking about it, because I've done it so many times. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, it really just takes practice. But if you want to do it, like, for sure, without having to practice it, um, basically just keep hitting square until you get, like, okay, we'll try to go for mini. So you'll just hit square until level down is starting to go down, and then just put your finger on circle, let go of square, and hit circle at the same time. So that's a good way to like learn how to do it. So that is how the normal slots work. Now that works for like Tifa's Limit Break, uh, that part, anything with slots in the game. But 
There is also Kate Sith's uh, ultimate limit break, and that works slightly differently, so I will explain that. So, the way that Kate Sith's limit break works is a lot different. Um, his limit break works on a, on a very strange system that has been called the Black Flag system. Uh, the way the Black Flag system works is uh, every... Basically, Kate Sith's ultimate limit break slots has like six or seven different combinations you can get. There's like Lucky Girl, there's like the Toy Box one, um, there's a there's one that kills your entire party, um, and then there's Game Over, which kills anything you're fighting. Um, the first thing you want to do to do this also is always put your ATB to wait, because that way you're not getting hit while you're trying to set it up. So we're going to kill good old Emerald Weapon. So, the way that black flagging works is they didn't want you to be able to get game over, um, even if you were like a super god at the slots, and you were like so good at the slots you could hit the right key every single time. They wanted to make sure that it was even harder to get it, because it one-shots anything in the whole game. So they wanted to make it nearly impossible to get game over. So what they did was they came up with this black flag system where if, and I believe it goes off your game time, I forget exactly, it's either like your game time or your money count or something like that, some arbitrary number in the memory. But it basically, it'll take that number, and if that number is any random number between, I think it's like 1 and 256, then it won't work. Only if it's a one specific number will it work. So, uh, basically, like, for example, Lucky Girl. Lucky Girl is like a... Is a, is a lot higher of a chance. It's like 80 out of, or, or it's like, I don't know, 200 out of 256 or something like that. So if, it'll take that number, and if it's anything 1 through 200, then it'll work. And then if it's 201 to 256, then it doesn't work. But with Game Over, it's 1 in 256. So basically, you have to match up all of the Game Over Kate Sith faces and you have a 1 in 256 chance that it even works. So that's why Game Over is extremely, extremely rare. So, in order to set this up, it's the same way as doing it as the, uh, the Battle Arena. Basically, you want to wait until you get to whatever's right before the Kate Sith phase. So, for this first slot, I believe it's the Crown. Crown, Bar, Kate Sith... Oh no, okay, so it's Crown, Bar, Kate Sith. So... Crown, Bar, Kate Sith. Now you saw I had Kate Sith slowly about to go away, so now we let go of Square and hit Circle. And there's the first phase. Next phase is Bar, Crown, Face. So we find Bar. We find Crown. Once again, let go hit Circle. There you go. Now, this is where the black flag comes in. So, if we have a 1 in 256 chance, well, let's say it this way, we have a 255 out of 256 chance that when we hit this final face, the game will automatically take it and move it to the next part of the slot. So, it's basically impossible to get unless we get really, really lucky. However, uh, Garland the Great, someone that many of you may know if you watch a lot of Final Fantasy VII content, he found a way to cheat the slots even further, cheat the black flag, and get the game to recognize game over, even if the game is supposed to move the slot over to the next thing. So the way this works is, like I said, when we hit this face, it will give me the face, but then it will move it down to the next spot. But if you hit circle super fast, you can cancel out the animation of the slot moving and get the face anyway. So you'll see the slot start to move to the next thing, but then I will cancel out the limit break, and the limit break will say, okay, what did he have? And see the three Kate Sith faces and give me game over. So let's see if we can do it. I don't get it every time, um, but let's see if we can do it. This is the one thing that, that even with practice, you can sometimes screw up. So... We have Crown, Heart, Bar, Crown, Kate Sith, and then the face. So we're looking for Heart, Crown, 
are actually Crown, Heart, Kate, Sith, or Bar. Kate, Crown, Kate, Sith, there we go. Okay, so now we're right before the face. So now I'm going to let go of square, and at the same time, I'm going to smash circle as fast as possible. And if we do it right, we'll get game over. Let's see if we get it. We got it. Fantastic. So there you go. See ya! And that's how easy I'm a weapon is. And like I said, this works on everything in the game, except Ruby Weapon with this... Uh, tentacles in the ground. And then later I also found out that if you use the one that kills your party, but Sephiroth is in your party because you cheated him in, it doesn't kill him because Sephiroth just straight up dies to nothing <laughs> because that's how they programmed him. But yeah, that's how you cheat the slots in Final Fantasy VII. Hope you enjoyed that.